So onto the snare drum. The snare drum's unique in that it has snare wires. So when we tune the snare drum, we're tuning the drum and we're also tuning the response we're getting from those snare wires. The snare drum also has less sustain than the toms. So you've got a wider range of pitches you can use for the snare drum. Okay, so you can tune your snare drum low for that fat sound or you can tune it high for that tight funky sound. And obviously you can tune it in the middle for a versatile snare sound. There's other factors that will affect the sound you get from the drum, such as the diameter of the shell, so that will affect the pitch. Then there's the depth of the shell. So with a shallower shell, you get more response from the snare wires, but with a deeper shell, you get more body to the sound. There's also the material of the shell. So obviously you've got wooden shells, which are gonna produce richer tones, and you've got metal shells, which are gonna produce higher, brighter tones. The drum heads are also gonna affect the sound. So on this drum, I've got a single ply coated batter head and a three mil snare side head. So with a single ply batter head, you're gonna get a brighter tone with more overtones. And with a double ply batter head, you're gonna get a more controlled sound. Okay, it's also gonna be more durable. The snare wires are also gonna affect the sound. So the thickness of the snare wires, how many snare wires you've got, and also the tension that the snare wires are at. So there's a lot of options when it comes to choosing a sound for a snare drum. So we're gonna take the snare drum through some different tensions to hear some different snare drum sounds. So we're gonna remove the heads first, okay? So we're gonna start with a batter head. So we're just gonna remove the hoop just like we did with the toms. Okay, so pick two opposites. And just turn the keys anti-clockwise to release the tension rods from the lugs. Okay, now this has got eight lugs, this snare drum. So we're gonna, we've just done these two lugs here. So we're gonna do the parallel opposites now. And another pair of opposites. And then the final pair of lugs. Okay, now, so because the, the snare drum can be tuned higher than uh, the other drums, the, um, the lugs are usually deeper, okay? So you might find that the tension rod, rods are a little bit harder to unscrew with, with your fingers. Okay, so you might kind of need to resort back to using a drum key. Okay, so you can kind of use the key all the way until the tension rods come out the lugs. Right, then remove the hoop. And then take off the old drum head. So before putting on the new drum head, I'm just gonna check the bearing edge. So just like with the other drum, you wanna sit the snare drum as if you were seated at the kit. Okay, so I've got my snare mechanism to the left-hand side here. Okay, so you're gonna line up the logo of the drum head with the logo of the shell. So I've got a logo here at the front. Okay. Press down a little bit to make sure it's seated on the bearing edge. And then hoop goes on top. So you wanna get the tip of the tension rod into the lug. Okay, so we'll do that with all of them. You can line up the head if it's moved a little bit. Okay. And then pick two opposite lugs. And we're just gonna finger tighten each lug until the tension rod comes into contact with the hoop. So these, uh, these lugs on this snare drum are a little bit tighter than the lugs on my toms, okay? So I need to kind of turn them a little bit harder towards the end. Okay, so you might have to use a drum key a little bit, so just take each tension rod, like I said, so it's touching uh, the hoop. Okay, so you can use a drum key, just make sure you don't go um, too high in tension, obviously don't, um, don't put too much tension into the, uh, the tension rod. Okay, so I'm just using my drum keys just to bring the tension rods down so they're coming into contact with the hoop. 
Okay, so as soon as they come into contact with the hoop, I stop adding tension. Okay, and the next two, two opposites again, so you want to bring the hoop down evenly, so you're not pulling the drum head to one side of the drum. Okay, so we're getting quite tight again now, so we're just going to use the drum key again for the last part and just bring the tension rods down a little more. As soon as they touch the hoop, that's when I stop. And then the final two. Okay, so we're at finger tight on the batter head. Okay, so you want to apply a little bit of pressure into the center of the head, okay, just to help with the seating of the drum head on the bearing edge nicely. Okay, and also just pre-stretches the head a little bit. Then once you've done that, just make sure the lugs are still finger tight, so that just pressing down on the head releases a little bit of friction in the hoop and the head. Okay, so you might find that some of the lugs will have a little bit more room to, to, to finger tighten. Okay, so now we're there with the batter head at finger tight. We're going to turn the drum over and we're going to remove the resonant head. Okay, now with the resonant head, obviously you've got the snare wires on top, so we need to remove that first. So you're going to put the snare mechanism into the off position to release the tension in the snare wires. Okay, then you're going to remove the snare wires from each side of the snare drum by loosening the tension rods of the plates on this side of the drum. Okay, and then you can release your string or straps, whichever's holding the, uh, the snare wires in place. And then do the same on the snare mechanism side. So just release the tension of the tension rods of the plate. And then once you've released enough tension, you can release the string or the straps and then remove the snare wires. And now you just remove the resonant head in the same way that you remove the batter head. So the hoop comes off, and then we remove the head. And then we're going to put the resonant head on. So you want to check the bearing edge of the drum, make sure it's smooth and flat and clean. Okay, then the resonant head goes on and you want to line up the logo of the resonant head with the logo of the batter head. So you can see it through the drum here. So you just want to make sure they're lined up. Okay, press down on the head a little bit just to make sure it's sitting on the bearing edge nicely. And then the hoop goes on top. On the bottom hoop of the snare drum, you'll notice that there are two openings or two slots on either side of the hoop, so they're opposite to each other. So these are for the snare wires to pass through. So when putting the hoop on the bottom of the snare drum, you need to make sure these openings or slots are gonna line up where the snare wires are going to go. So my snare mechanism is here, so I know my wires are gonna come across here. So I'm just gonna line up the slots or the openings. You wanna get the tips of the tension rods into the lugs. Pick two opposite lugs and then bring it down to finger tight. So again, you might find that the lugs get a bit tight towards the end and then if the tension rods aren't quite touching the hoop, you just want to use your key again. And then pick parallel opposites. So once you're under finger tight, you just want to apply a little bit of pressure the palm of your hand into the middle of the head. Now this is a snare side head, so it's a thin head, so you wanna make sure you don't press down too hard, okay? So you're just doing this to help with the seating of the drum head onto the bearing edge, and obviously just pre-stretching the head a little bit, okay? So just be really light with your touch. 
and then that would have released some friction in the hoop and the drum head. So you just want to make sure the lugs are still finger tight. And that's the resonant head at finger tight. So to install the snare wires, we've got two sides of the snare drum. We've got the snare mechanism side and we've got the butt plate side. Okay, so you're going to lay your snare wires down onto the snare side head. Again, you'll have string or straps. Okay, so you're going to pass those through the gap in the hoop. Okay, both sides. Okay, now we'll start with the butt plate side, which is the opposite side to the snare mechanism. Okay, so you wanna bring the end plate of the wires to the edge of the drum, okay, just inside the edge. Okay, and then you wanna put your string or straps through the plates, okay, so you can loosen the tension rods. So they should already be loose, because obviously you've removed the snare wires, but you can loosen them a bit more if they need some more. So you need just need to put them in between the plates. Okay, then you want to pull through and make sure there's an even amount of string or strap on both sides. Okay, so you want to pull them so they're about even. And then you can bring them round just to neat, neaten them up as they, before you tighten the plates. Okay, because otherwise you'll have kind of string hanging out of the plates. Okay, so you want to bring them back down so they're um, going towards the bottom of the snare drum. Okay, so make sure the end plate of the snare wires is just inside the edge of the head. Okay, then once they're there, you wanna tighten the plates together by tightening the tension rods. Okay, so you can do it with your fingers first. Okay, so you can hold the straps that way, just to make sure they're still even. Once they're finger tight, you can use your drum key to tighten the plates to hold the strap or strings in place. Okay, then we move to the snare mechanism side. So you want to release the snare mechanism first, so it's in the off position, and then you want to reduce the tension in the snare mechanism as well. Okay, so you might have a little dial that you can loosen the tension of the, um, the snare mechanism. Okay, so you want to bring that right down to, to its minimum. Okay, and then you want to do the exact same with this side. So you want to put the string or straps through the, the plates, okay? So you want to loosen the tension of the tension rods so there's enough space to pass through the, the string or straps. Okay, and then you again, you want to make sure the string is even on both sides. You don't want a longer piece one side than the other. Okay, same with the straps. So pull them through. And you just want to pull them through with a bit of tension, okay? So you want to make sure that these, the, these aren't loose, okay, the snare wires aren't loose. You wanna pull through with tension. Now obviously, because you've loosened off the tension of the snare mechanism and you've turned the, the snare mechanism off, when you, when you increase the tension and turn the snare mechanism on, that's obviously gonna pull some tension into the wires. But you wanna pull some initial tension into the wires before you um, tighten it into the plates at the loosest, um, the loosest setting. Okay, so you wanna pull through the, the string or straps and then again, you just want to tighten the plates together by tightening the tension rods. Okay, so you can do it with your fingers first just to get it in initial position. And when you pull the wires across into the snare mechanism side, you just want to make sure the snare wires are straight. Okay, you don't want to be pulling it across at an angle. Okay, so make sure they're lining up nicely with the other side so both end plates of the snare wires are kind of nice and parallel with the head. Okay, so pull through, get the Plates the finger tight, and then you just want to tighten with a drum key to just keep them in place. Okay, and again, you can tidy up the uh, the string or strap by bringing it back round so it's coming down towards the bottom of the, um, the snare drum. Okay, just to keep things neat and tidy. And then because we're tuning the snare drum to a kind of versatile all round sound, you're just going to increase uh, the tension on the snare mechanism to about halfway, okay? So we'll start there and then just turn your snare mechanism on and that will bring some tension into the snare wires and that's gonna pull, pull the uh, snare wires towards the snare mechanism side, which is why we started it further towards the uh, butt plate side, okay? 
So when the tension's increased, it will pu pull across, and you want to make sure both end plates of the snare wires aren't touching the shell, okay? So they want to be on the, uh, just the drum head. Okay, so that's the snare wires installed. Now the bottom head of a snare drum, we call this snare side head, because it's the side with the snares on, the snare wires on. So we're going to turn the drum over now. So we're at finger tight in both the batter head and the resonant head. Okay, so let's listen to how the drum sounds at the moment. So that actually sounds okay. So it's a low fat snare drum sound, but there's a lot of buzz. So because the snare side head is tuned low, it's moving about a bit, which means it's coming into contact with the snare wires too much, okay, so you're getting too much buzz. So we're gonna increase the tension of both heads. Okay, now generally the snare side head is tuned higher than the batter head, so we're gonna increase the tension of the batter head by half turn, and we're gonna increase the tension of the snare side head by three, quarter, three quarters of a turn. Okay, so we're gonna do it in quarter turn increments. So with the batter head, we're going to increase by quarter on each lug initially. So you want to pick two opposites and then the parallel opposites because we've got eight lugs on the drum again. So that's a quarter turn and then another quarter turn which will mean each lug gets a half turn. So you hear quite a bit of cracking with the, uh, with the snare head. And then we'll turn the drum over and then we'll increase the tension of the snare side head by three quarters of a turn. So again, we'll do it, in, do it in quarter increments. We'll do all one quarter, and then we'll do another quarter, and then we'll do a third quarter. You might also find that when you're turning with a drum key, you'll feel kind of less or more tension in some lugs. Okay, so obviously you make changes for that. So if you feel like there's less tension there, just kind of add more of a turn, so increase the amount you're turning it. Okay, so you want all of these lugs at about the same, the same uh, tension, okay? So just as you're going around, just kind of use, use your feel as well, okay? So if you feel it needs a little bit more than another lug, just give it a bit more, or if you feel it needs a little less because it's, it's tighter than the others, just give it a little less, okay? So, right, so we've increased the tension of both heads. So the snare side head's slightly higher. So let's hear how the drum sounds now. So we're getting some inharmonics there, some overtones that aren't complementing the sound. Okay, and there's still a lot of buzz. So we're gonna increase the tension of both heads again. So we're gonna increase the batter head by a quarter turn, and we're gonna increase the resonant head by a quarter plus a sixteenth of a turn. Okay, so like I said before, we want that resonant head, that snare side head, tuned slightly higher than the batter head. Okay, so we'll do a quarter turn on the batter head. Then we'll do a quarter first on the snare side head. And then a sixteenth of a turn. Okay, so let's hear how it sounds now. So we're getting a tighter sound now, we're moving away from that fat sound. There's still some overtones, but they're harmonic now, okay? So they're actually complementing the sound of the drum. And we're getting, getting some good snare response, okay? So uh, that uh, resonant head, the snare side head's definitely improved at that tension. Okay, so let's increase both heads again. So we'll increase the batter and resonant head by a quarter turn. So you might hear some cracking of the glue um, with the drum head. So obviously there's glue holding the, um, the film in the hoop. Okay, so you might hear that cracking as you increase the tension, so that's totally normal. So we've increased the batter head by a quarter turn. 
on each lug. So we'll do the same with a resonant head, which is the snare side head. So this lug's a little bit looser than the others, so I'm just gonna apply a little bit more um, tension into that lug. Okay, let's hear how it sounds now. So that's a good snare sound. It's on the higher, tighter side, but it's still quite a versatile sound. All right, so let's increase the tension again. So we're gonna increase the batter head by another quarter turn, and we're just gonna increase the resonant head a little more. So we're gonna do a quarter turn plus a sixteenth of a turn again on the resonant head, the snare side head. Okay, so let's increase the batter head first by a quarter turn. And then the snare side head by a quarter first of all on each lug. And then another 16th as well. Right, let's hear how it sounds now. So it still sounds okay, but we're not getting much response from the snare wires. Okay, so that might be because we've taken the snare side head too tight, so there's not much movement in the head, which means we're not getting much contact with the snare wires. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna increase the tension of the batter head, so we're gonna increase that by another quarter turn, and we're gonna decrease the tension of the snare side head, okay? So we're gonna bring it down a sixteenth. Okay, so let's increase the tension of the batter head first, so a quarter turn. And then we'll bring the tension down in the snare side head just by a sixteenth, so a small amount. Just kind of bring it back to where we were the turn before, okay, where we're getting good response from the snare. Okay, so we just want to see whether that good response from the snare, well, we'll see how it sounds with this increased tension in the batter head. Okay, so let's hear how the drum sounds now. So that's a really tight sound. So it could be used for some musical situations, okay, but I think we're kind of reaching the end of the pitch range of this drum. Okay, so there's a, there's a large choice to pick from for the sound of your snare drum. So obviously all those factors are gonna change the sounds you're getting from yours. So just experiment with it, see what you like. But for a general rule, it's good to have that um, snare side head just tuned a little bit higher. When fine tuning the batter head of the snare drum, you want to make sure the snare wires are turned off so you're not getting that snare wire response. And when fine tuning the snare side head, you want to put a stick underneath the snare wires on top of the hoop to make sure the snare wires aren't touching the head. So if you want to reduce the ring of your snare drum, what you can do is you can either use a thicker drum head, so you can use a two-ply drum head instead of a single-ply drum head, or you can add some damping or muffling, so you can put a ring around the edge of the snare head, okay, which will increase the uh, mass of the snare at, around the edge, which is obviously where the, where the overtones are. Okay, you can also use some moon gel or some gaff tape on the, um, on the head. You can put it on the head, which will, again, reduce those overtones. Experiment with the snare wires as well. So you want to increase the tension of the snare wires and decrease the tension, okay, just to change the response of the snare, just change the amount of snare wires you're hearing. Okay, so remember when you tune the snare drum, you're tuning the sound of the drum and also the snare wires as well, how much response you're getting from those snare wires. And if you're still not getting the response you want, you want to look at the snare side head. Okay, you might have tuned it too high if you're not getting any response from the snare wires. And also you want to look at the thickness of the snare side head as well. Because the thinner the snare side head, the more response you're going to get from the snare wires. And the thicker 
the snare side head is, the less response you're going to get from the snare wires. For a fat snare drum sound, you want to go low in tension for both the batter head and the snare side head. You also want to go lower in tension with the snare wires and you want to muffle the batter head as well, okay? So like I said, you can add muffling with an O-ring, some moon gel, some gaff tape, or even by putting your, your wallet on the batter head. For a tight, funky sounding snare, you want to go high in tension in both the batter head and the snare side head, and you want the snare side head a little higher in tension than the batter head. Okay, remember you don't want to take either head too tight, you don't want to choke the drum or stop there from being any response from the snare wires. You want to go single ply batter head, okay, just for those overtones, and you want to go high in tension with the snare wires as well, okay? So you want to slowly increase the tension of those snare wires till you get the response and the articulation that you want. To get a hip hop sound from your snare drum, you want to go high in tension on both the batter head and the snare side head. You want to go slightly higher in tension on the snare side head than the batter head. You also want to go high in tension with the snare wires and you also want to add some muffling to the batter head. Okay, so O-ring, moon gel, gaff tape, okay, anything just to de um, decrease the overtones. For a versatile snare sound, you want to go for medium tension in both the batter head and the snare side head, and you want slightly more tension in the snare side head than the batter head. You also want a medium tension with the snare wires, and if you want a higher, brighter sound with more overtones, go for a single ply coated batter head, or if you want a more controlled sound with less overtones, go for a double ply coated head. For a reggae sounding snare drum, you want to go high in tension for both the batter head and the snare side head. You also want to go high in tension with the snare wires. And you want to keep that ring, those overtones, so you want a single ply coated batter head with no dampening or muffling. For a jazz sounding snare drum, you want to go for medium tension in both the batter head and the snare side head. You also want to go for medium tension with the snare wires. You want to go for thin drum heads. You want to go for a single ply coated batter head and you also want to go for a thin snare side head as well. So three mil maximum, but you can find some two mil snare side heads as well if you want some more response from those snare wires and more articulation from the notes. So that's the whole kit tune, so let's listen to how it sounds. So you really have to use your ears when tuning a drum kit. You've got to find the pitch range of a drum, then you've got to choose a fundamental pitch in that pitch range, then you've got to choose the resonance you want, and then you've got to fine tune the drum by matching up the pitches at the lug points. You've also got to listen out for the intervals between the toms. So this will get easier and easier the more you tune your kit, you'll get more familiar with the sounds, and you'll know what sound you want from each drum. But if you are struggling to find the sound or you're struggling to differentiate between pitches and match up pitches and so on, then you can use a drum tuner. So what you can do is you can enter into an app the size of the drums you have and it will let you know the lug frequencies to tune your drum up to. So you can clip on a tuner to the hoop of your drum and then you'll know which lug frequency to tune the drum to and then you can gradually increase the tension of your lugs until you reach the frequency of the lug points. Okay, then you just want to match up all the lug frequencies okay, for both the batter head and the resonant head 
and then you're going to get the fundamental frequency of the drum for that size. So using a tuner is great if you do struggle to tune by ear, but if you're good at tuning by ear, you can also use a tuner to tell you what you've tuned your drums to. So if you're happy with the sound of your drums, you can put on a tuner, hit the drum, it will tell you what fundamental pitch the drum is. You can also work out what individual pitches of both heads you've got. So next time you tune your kit, you can tune them all to the same pitches.